This video introduces the basic concepts of logic, including the nature of arguments, inference, and the difference between arguments and explanations. Reasoning is a mental process of making decisions, solving problems, and predicting the future. This mental process is called inference. The study of logic is one tool for improving our ability to reason, in other words, our ability to come to conclusions using inferences. It isn't the only way to improve our reasoning, and in fact, the use of logic to improve our reasoning is rare in everyday life compared to other strategies. I'm not trying to be cynical. Logic is extremely valuable, but most people rarely analyze their logic to improve their decision making. Reasoning involves emotion and unconscious processes as well as logic. People use all sorts of rules of thumb, common sense, hunches, and the experience of it just made sense to improve their decision making. Overall, we're pretty good at reasoning without really thinking about it, but we also make mistakes. In addition, the complexity of problems that we can handle is limited without some tools to help, like logic and writing. In the last couple of decades, psychologists have discovered that having emotional responses is essential for being able to reason effectively. People who have had brain damage and lost the ability to have emotional responses to other people can't reason effectively. This is true even if their general intelligence is perfectly fine. Logic isn't enough to make effective decisions in everyday life. Logic is a particular approach to reasoning that allows us to evaluate our thinking far more carefully and in greater detail than we normally do. It is similar to the role of mathematics. Most of the time we don't need math to, to tell us something is really big, very small, or that it's likely to rain. But just as mathematics allows us to extend our understanding of quantities, sizes, causes, and predictions, logic can help us sort out, improve, and extend our reasoning processes. For instance, all computer programs are based on logic. In fact, the circuits of computers are basically a physical representation of logical processes. Complex tasks that computers perform are broken down into questions that have yes or no answers. Then, billions of true-false logic switches are used to sort out the best answer. The phrase that someone has a reason for doing something can mean a variety of things. In the study of logic, we will be looking at arguments in which premises provide justification for accepting conclusions. A good reason for doing something in everyday life might be, I went to the store because we ran out of milk. That might be my reason in the sense of having a motive but it isn't the kind of good reasons studied in logic. We might explain that my bowling ball bounced over two alleys and smashed the Coke machine because I had butter on my fingers from the popcorn. But that's not an, an argument. Explanations aren't the same as arguments. But if someone said that if you bowl with greasy fingers, you won't be able to control the ball. You did bowl with greasy fingers. Therefore, you weren't able to control the ball. That is an argument. If the premises are true, in this case, bowling with greasy fingers doesn't allow you to control the ball, and you did bowl with greasy fingers, we can infer the conclusion that you didn't control the ball. Our conclusion would be warranted, in other words, justified by the argument. If we knew the premises were true, we wouldn't even have to watch the ball fly over two alleys to know the conclusion is warranted. The argument doesn't explain what happened, but the argument does show how we could have reasoned it would happen. So logical arguments aren't the same thing as having a motive or an explanation for something. Let's take an everyday example of reasoning. A man walks into a hotel. A dog is lying next to the hotel desk. The man asks the hotel clerk, does your dog bite? The clerk says, no, my dog doesn't bite. The man leans over to pet the dog. The dog leaps up, barks, growls, and snaps at the man. The man says, I thought you said your dog didn't bite. The clerk says, that's not my dog. This is an old joke, and it was used in a, as a scene in an old Peter Sellers movie. The man did use logic to come to a conclusion. One problem 
is that the second premise of an argument that he used without really thinking about it was false. The first premise is, the dog is sleeping next to the clerk. Fair enough, he could see that. The second premise he accepted a little too quickly is that dogs don't sleep around people who aren't their owners. The conclusion he came to in a matter of seconds was that the clerk is the dog's owner. But because one of the premises was false, the conclusion wasn't warranted. Here's another wrong inference that he made. Hotel clerks are helpful. Being helpful includes taking into account relevant information if someone asks you a question. The inference goes something like this. This is a hotel clerk. Hotel clerks are helpful. Being helpful includes taking into account relevant information like, I'm probably asking about the dog lying next to him, not his dog at home. Here's a quick review of the terms we have used so far. Inference is a reasoning process. Inferences use reasoning about assumptions to come to a conclusion. If we state assumptions and arrange them to infer a conclusion, we are making an argument. When assumptions are used in an argument, they are called premises. Here is one more term that we need for our definition of the kind of logic being used in most of these examples. The term is proposition, and the kind of logic we will be exploring during most of the semester is called propositional logic. An argument contains two or more premises and one conclusion. Premises and conclusions are all propositions, so that is, sentences that are either true or false. What about, hand me the broom, or could you loan me ten bucks? These are sentences, but they are not propositions, because they can't be either true or false. The first one is a command, and then the second one is a question. What about, that dog is probably friendly? That wouldn't be considered a good proposition in logic, because it says it might be true or false that dogs are friendly. A proposition must be a statement that is one or the other, either true or false. Logic is the study of inferences and their relationship to premises and conclusions in arguments. This isn't a bad definition of logic, and it pretty much summarizes how we'll be dealing with logic in this course. Finally, to use our new term, propositional logic is the study of inferences about propositions. In other words, inferences about statements that are either true or false. So let's go back to our example for a minute. Why did the man almost get bit? He made valid inferences, but some of his premises, that is his assumptions, were false. Consequently, his conclusion, the dog is safe to pet, wasn't a sound conclusion. An argument that follows the rules of logic is called a valid argument. A valid argument in which the premises are true is, is called a sound argument. The arguments that the man used to respond to the clerk and dog were valid, but not sound. So given what we've seen so far, what's the logician's job? One job is to check the inferences that are made in an argument. Are they valid inferences? We'll be studying different ways to answer that question. Logicians also need to check premises. Can we assume the premises are true? Sometimes this is reasonable to do. If we ask a doctor about a medication and the doctor says it's safe, it's reasonable to take their word for it. That doesn't mean they are always right, but we usually won't check for ourselves. After all, we go to experts so we don't have to figure it out ourselves. We rely on things like credentials, reputation, and honesty to decide if it's reasonable to accept what they say as true. If we aren't willing to accept someone else's opinion, we will need to look for evidence for our assumptions. We'll be looking into different ways that people can make mistakes about assumptions. Here's a more complicated but important way to, to check premises. If our inferences are valid and we assume the premises are true, do we get a true conclusion? If not, at least one of the premises must be false. We'll be looking into this last test of logical arguments from several perspectives. In conclusion, don't bowl with greasy fingers. Let sleeping dogs lie. 
and only make sound arguments. Thanks for watching.